Good evening. How's New York? I heard New York was much louder than that. How's New York? Awesome. My name is Terry White, Worldwide Design Evangelist for Adobe. And how many of you are on Creative Cloud? Awesome. Yes. One million thank yous. That's right. We reached our one million goal early. So this means that not only were we happy that we reached a million users, paid users, but it also validated what we were trying to do. Now, of course, there's some of you, of course, not on Creative Cloud yet. So with that, let's talk a little bit about that. So why Creative Cloud? Why this big change for Adobe? And it is a monumental change for Adobe. If you think about it, go back prior to a year ago, every 18 to 24 months, two years to come out with something new. That's a lifetime in technology now. Two years to work on a product, two years to work on features, and then release a product, hope you upgrade, hope they're great, and then we have another two years to work on the next one. Well, that all kind of changed for us. Not recently, it actually changed for us a couple of versions ago. How many of you remember CS5? Oh, <laughs> CS5, how many of you are still on it? <laughs> all right, I'm checking. Still a couple back there. So, CS5 came out April 2010. And that was a great release for us. That was a big release, lots of new features, cool things. But at the same time, another company, Apple, shipped something called the iPad. And two products really didn't have much to do with each other, or at least so we thought, until it created this groundswell of demand for digital content on this hot new device. We had just shipped CS5. It had nothing in it to do that, except for InDesign. And we had to hand code the first app for Wired to get it out on the iPad. And of course, once that was a success, every other magazine, every other major magazine came to us saying, do us, do, do it next for us. And of course, we're not in the habit, or nor do we have the bandwidth to create everyone's application by hand. But imagine if we told them, well, we just shipped CS5. I'm sure we'll have that feature in CS6 in the next two years. Come back then. Imagine how that would have gone over. So we rushed quickly to come out with a solution because also at the same time, there was the big demand for HTML5. So we came out with 5.5. Remember that, CS5.5? A year later, we thought, a year, we, we've done it. We came out with something cool a year later. And we know how much you love .5 updates. <laughs> Painfully. So, no more dot five updates. We also realized that a year is still too long. So the best way to tackle this was to be able to come out with the updates for each of the applications without having to wait for the other applications. So that pretty much killed the suite model. Because if you think about the suite, everything came out at the same time, everything had to wait for everything else to be ready. And of course, that could take 18 to 24 months. So month to month was the best way to do it. And when the updates are ready, and from a financial standpoint, from a revenue recognition standpoint in this country, we can't just give features away, we have to actually charge for them. So rather than charge you for every single feature, the best way to do it was a subscription plan. And that is what made Creative Cloud. Now, of course, we promised back in May 2012 that if you do Creative Cloud, we're gonna show you a constant stream of innovation. And we delivered upon this. Photoshop's been updated four or five times since then. InDesign a few times since then, Illustrator a few times since then. Muse has gotten updates every two months since it came out in May 2012. So these applications constantly being updated as soon as these features are available. And that was the promise that we've been delivering on since May 2012 and that we will continue to deliver on. As a matter of fact, Muse CC just got a brand new update last week. So we've already started it for November. Now, the 15 desktop apps that we announced in May, released in June, have always been the cornerstone
for what Adobe does best. 15 great new desktop apps with great new features. But they are no longer the only thing we focus on. They are a part of what Creative Cloud is. And when we look at Creative Cloud, it starts with the desktop apps. But then where it makes sense, we integrate those features into the cloud. So that's syncing your settings, syncing your fonts, syncing uh, content, syncing um, colors. I was missing one. Then, of course, there's collaboration, because we know you don't work alone. Whether it's working with a client, an art director, a colleague, we know that you want to share content. So that's why each Creative Cloud member gets cloud storage, to be able to optionally share, share files if they choose to. Then we also realize that there's a creative aspect of it, community aspect. So that's why we acquired the world's largest creative community online, Behance.net, with over 1.4 million users. So for those of you who have never heard of Behance, you can go to Behance.net right now and sign up for it. It's free. But what it is, is if you think of LinkedIn and Facebook for creatives, that's Behance. So Behance is not just, hey, you know, your, your family picture of your dog's cool. It's really, your project is cool. Here are some things I would suggest that you do or change or whatever. It's great feedback from other creatives just like you. So you can post a work in progress, you can post the final projects, and get feedback from other creatives like you. <clears throat> and then, of course, once you've got that uh, project finished, you probably want to put it up as your portfolio. So Behance, although it was free and still is, they had a paid component called ProSite. ProSite was your paid $100 a year professional portfolio. The minute we acquired them, $100 a year goes away, it becomes part of Creative Cloud. So now any Creative Cloud member can create a ProSite professional customizable portfolio and share their work. And then last but not least, once that work is created and shared, then the next thing you probably want to do is publish it, whether it be print publishing, which we've done for years, video publishing, web publishing, and of course, app creation. All of this is part of Creative Cloud now. So when you look at this, this is the picture. This is our vision going forward. This is what makes up Creative Cloud. Now, we also realized that one size doesn't fit all. So we came out originally with an individual plan. Then shortly thereafter, we added the team plan for smaller organizations work groups, and then, of course, enterprise plans for larger companies, hundreds or thousands of seats on their desktops, and then last but not least, education and government. So we try to have as many different plans as necessary to meet the needs of our customers. Now, with that, there are always some misconceptions. People hear cloud and freak out. So first misconception, well, I got to run this in my browser? And the answer is no. The applications download and install just like they always did. And yes, you can run them right alongside your previous versions. We don't deactivate anything. We don't turn anything off. We don't disconnect anything you already had. It basically runs on your desktop. Well, then if it's on my desktop, I got to be co connected all the time, right? And the answer is no. You can be disconnected. Originally, it was 30 days. We changed it from 30 days to 99 days. You can be totally disconnected. Now, and even after the 99 days, it just connects for a few seconds just to verify your membership's still on and paid. Now, we let you be offline for 99 days. I don't believe you're going to be offline for 99 days, but you asked for it, you got it. I've yet to meet a person that's not been connected for more than two seconds. OK. <laughs> Well, I can't use it because my enterprise doesn't allow all this stuff outside the firewall. Well, no problem. The users or admin can turn off specific features that they don't allow outside the firewall. So no problem. We work with in enterprises all the time to help them do the right thing for their customers or their uh, colleagues. Well, I can't share files if they're not on Creative Cloud, right? You're creating this pyramid scheme. Everyone has to be on it before they can sh see files back and forth. Pyramid and of scheme. course, that's <laughs> not the case. You can share a file with anyone. Now, here's what I hate. I hate when someone sends me a link, I click on it, and I got to sign up, join, pay, click, create an account, create a password, whatever, to see what they're sending me. So luckily, thank God, 
We don't make you do any of that. You put a file in Creative Cloud, you share it, if the person clicks the link, they're looking at your file. Simple as that. You allow download, they can download your file. You don't allow download, they're just looking at it. And yes, they can make comments as well. Well, I don't want all these updates that you're talking about installed automatically. If I'm in the middle of an InDesign project, I don't want anything to change till I'm done, nor do I. That's why, as always, we alert you of the update. You click the update button whenever you're ready. You don't want to do it today. You don't want to do it next week. You want to do it for 99 days? Uh, don't do it for 99 days or 100 days. Well, even if I only use one application, I've got to pay for the whole thing, right? This whole $49.99 a month. No. We've always had a single app membership that was $19.99 a month. However, if you were on CS3 to CS6, the price for the first year drops down to $9.99 a month. Now, with that said, we heard loud and clear from another segment of our community. They're called photographers. I'm one as well. I've got a camera over here somewhere. Oh, actually, Alan's walking around with it. So I'm a photographer as well. And photographers are a strange bunch because we use two things, Photoshop, Lightroom. And paying 20 bucks a month for both of those separately just doesn't work. We want Photoshop and Lightroom and anything else you're willing to give us <laughs> for less. So we did just that. We came out with this plan, I don't know, a couple months ago. Till the end of the year, you can sign up for $9.99 a month to get Photoshop, Lightroom, a customizable Behance Pro site, and 20 gigs of storage. Now, the problem though, when we first came out with this, is that you had to have a previous version of Photoshop to qualify. It was our way of rewarding Photoshop users. $9.99 a month, you had to be on CS3 to CS6 to get it. So what if you're on education? What if you're on elements? What if you're on a suite? What if you're on something else? What if you never own Photoshop? Well, as of today, we're doing a Black Friday special that starts early. <laughs> so from now till December 2nd, it's open to everyone. And the price is $9.99. It doesn't go to $20. It doesn't go to $30. It's $9.99. So it's not a one-year thing, it's $9.99. Now someone always asks, well, does that mean it's $9.99 forever? Nothing is $9.99 forever. <laughs> so yes, it could potentially go to $10.50, but it is not going to $20, it's not going to $30, it's not going to $40. That is the price. So with that, why Creative Cloud? Well, the first reason is to work smarter with all the Adobe Creative apps and the 15 plus desktop apps that you've known and loved. The second is to sync things that make sense to sync with the cloud. Your apps are still running on your computer locally, but syncing settings optionally if you choose to. Third one, learn new apps and services and publish to millions using the services that are built into Creative Cloud. And then last but not least, manage your collaboration with your clients and colleagues with built-in ways to share your work. Thank you.